Financial Planner, presented by the Bombay Stock Exchange, IPF. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of uh, Financial Planner. My name is Smriti Rao and thanks so much for being with us through all these episodes. We hope that you're picking up the basics of investment as we're going along. On the show today, we have Sumit Ved, the friend of the show and also a certified financial planner. Sumit works with uh, Freedom Financial Planners. He set it up, in fact, and we'll be asking and grilling Sumit on uh, the basics of investments and we'll be talking about what we can learn about not just the stock markets, but also basic financial planning. So, Sumit, welcome. Always awesome Pleasure. to see you again. And today we'll talk about um, what are the sort of factors that you must keep in mind if you want to buy a stock, if you want to start investing. What are the couple of just a couple of key pointers that will help you navigate through the maze of stocks that you see on the index? So there are almost 1500 companies on the National sure. Stock Exchange, close to about 5000 listed companies on the Bombay Stock Exchange. It's very difficult to keep track of all these companies, learn their fundamentals, sure. learn about the management. So, Sumit, I want to start off with, um, you know, one of the factors that experts say will help you cut through the clutter, just find one of those gems and maybe stick to it. So, the idea is that you find a company whose market cap is a little bit more than 250 crores. Sure. So why is it important for us to pick slightly larger companies and avoid very small, very innocuous um, companies? Uh, Smithy, I'll start off by, uh, by highlighting one factor, uh, saying that uh, what we are trying to achieve by educating investors and viewers of how to pick stock is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And I want to highlight that factor and try and put it in a very transparent manner to our viewers that um, Ideally, it will be great if you have your own investment advisor who is right. an expert uh, in this area and who really understands it well and whose profession is to do that. Uh, because it becomes very difficult as a lay investor, as a lay you know, human being living our own life and going through our own ups and downs and trying to figure out what the stock market is all about. Mm. Uh, many a time, half-baked uh, situation of investing in stock market results in not good experiences and then people getting turned off from this, this yeah. is not my place. So it's a risk factor I'm upfront saying that yes, we are trying to articulate this, we'll try our best to explain it to you, what is the way to do it, but one of the best ways to do it is have a good investment advisor slash financial planner with you will help you identify this. Still you need to know them because eventually it's your money. So, so coming to the perspective of uh, why we should look for uh, the turnover, right? Uh, the question uh, just, just look for a company that's a little larger, not go for these penny stocks. So, uh, see, um, the basic premise of buying a stock is that you are expecting that company uh, price to do well over a period of time. So, if that share is available, let's say at 100 rupees, your expectation is this 100 will give me or will become 200 over next three years or four years. Now, that 100 will become 200 based on the performance of the company. Mm. And one of the best criteria to judge the performance of the company is, is, is the size of the market capitalization or the turnover uh, because too small a company uh, has its own problems, has its own uh, challenges, uh, which will be very difficult for you and me to figure it out on an actively basis. So, I think one of the first factors which you need to have is market capitalization, 250 crore. This talks about decency of the size and that can be one of the first filters you can assume in choosing the stocks. As soon as you do that, the list of 5,000 stocks it gets immediately, cut down. Immediately gets cut down. True. And, uh, you know, like Sumit said, just uh, setting a market cap of about 250 crores will help you eliminate those penny stocks. It will cut through the cl clutter. And like he pointed out, tracking companies will then become much, much easier. There are about 500 such stocks on the NSC that are about uh, 250 or so uh, in their market cap. So that's one good idea for you. Just look for slightly larger companies. The other thing you should look for is uh, the company's trading volumes. Are they high or are they low? So, meet a lot of experts when, when we see some stocks randomly react, 15% sure. up, 14% up, you see their trading volumes are so low and then, you know, they spike up so badly and investors get worried, you know, should I be investing in this, should I be selling my stocks? What would you, what is the relationship between a company and its trading volumes? I think trading volume is a very good in indicator of floating stock available. That means, you know, how much of that particular company stock is available in the stock market to be traded upon. That's the first factor. And why it is important is, uh, it tells you how the price movement will be. If, if, the, if, the, if the floating stock of a company is not as m healthy in terms of being available in the market, then uh, on, on little bit of actions of certain shareholders, the price can really move up very fast and down very fast. Mm. So it's not a very healthy price finding mechanism in that case and similarly uh, in, in, in terms of uh, you know trading volume being 
high also is an indicator that there is a lot of people who who really track this particular stock they they participate in the you know buying and selling of this particular stock that means lot many more people are researching about it information is easily accessible so it, it's it's like you have a benchmark for it right uh, if if uh, trading volume is low that means there are very few people who are really tracking this stock and investing in it uh, as a result of which uh, on a very basic parameter it's a, it's a little bit more riskier kind of a right stock. it also becomes harder to get into these stocks and get out of these stocks True. because there aren't that many buyers or sellers True. for that particular stock Very true. um so yeah the companies should basically have a reasonable trading volume low volume stocks like sumit pointed out they rise very quickly and they fall very quickly so it becomes very difficult for you if you hold those stocks to get in and out of those stocks now you also mentioned quality disclosure sumit saying that if a lot of people are invested in a particular stock a lot of people are researching it and studying it and re- publishing reports about sure. it or uh, talk to us about how you should be looking for a company that makes these disclosures makes quality disclosures so how so why is it important for us to look for a company that has a transparent management and that's open about its information uh, just like any other relationship uh, uh, even in this relationship of buying a particular share uh, we need to be really sure that uh, underlying management of that company is transparent trustworthy because you are eventually a, a part owner of that company and you are you are giving them your money to be used for doing that particular business if you don't have trust and faith in that particular company on their transparency and their ability to do business what they say i think somewhere deep inside then we'll not be able to hold on to that particular share for a very very long period of time so it's a fundamental trust question out here which needs to get addressed and quality of disclosure is one such parameter which gives us the sense how exactly this particular company is doing it and it's not only disclosure uh, we are mentioning quality of disclosure so quality of disclosure means what kind of dis- disclosures are you doing are you giving us uh, indication of the way company is going to move in future uh, new contracts have coming up if there was a slippage in terms of a reported figure versus a predicted figure what was the reason behind it are you explaining it mm. uh, uh, are you are you treating us as a equal partner and trying to build comfort by letting us know what the business environment is how the prediction is going to really go what is the guidance there are so many things which really build trust in a particular stock and that trust basically results in my ability as an investor to hold it for a longer period of time even through downturn knowing eventually that this stock is good management is good and i can really make money over a period of time right so it's quality disclosures this is not just disclosure not now uh, one way to track uh, uh, information or disclosures coming in from a company is just go to the company's website and over there you will have a you have a section for uh, press releases so that uh, that will talk about what the company has been up to in the last couple of months they'll talk about the projects that they're working on there also investor information available on the company's website so if you go over there you can probably see the company's uh, uh, the quarterly performance what they're working on and any reports that they publish showing the annual uh, reports the press releases past results all of that will be on the company's website that's an easy way to um, look for just quality information and like uh, sumit said availability of information just makes tracking the company that much more easier so look for a good company that's open about uh, its management now the other thing that one can look for when picking a stock and when trying to select a company is just look at their performance quarterly performance annual performance and one key indicator can be the operating profits that's a number that one should be paying attention to why sure. is that no it's a, it's a basic fundamental uh, rule of growth or or any other business or or in fact life anything which can be measured can be improved so um, uh, if you want to really go and improve upon what uh, what a particular performance of company has been you should be able to measure their performance mm-hmm. uh, so uh, b- past performance and then today's performance whether it's going the right direction or not and the reason behind it is one of the essential fundamentals of you know investing in stock as we said stock is all about stock market and stock market has two which is buyer and seller and these buyer and sellers have point of view these point of views based basically on the past performance right based on the, the disclosure based on the way company has been you know indicating uh, its growth chart and other, other stuff like this so it's it's one of the fundamental uh, things uh, uh, reasoning for uh, efficient operationalization of uh, a stock market so you need to look at performance based on the performance you need to make a call whether you need to stick in this With stock that sell it or buy more and one example for operating profits and this sort of relationship with the stock we saw sks microfinance and the euphoria that sure. surrounded that particular stock people were very excited about the sort of growth prospects that the company had till uh, the state of andhra pradesh went ahead and slapped a act in place that affected sks's performance and then we saw when their quarterly results were announced the stock took 
a real bad battering. That's because investors weren't happy with the sort of profits that were coming in and they weren't so sure that the company was going to recover and get back on the sort of trajectory that it was on. So an operating profit is a key indicator. You can look for it and like we said, look for quality disclosures. Just go to the website of the company. You'll find it over there or if you're tracking uh, stocks clearly the business news channels have it all right it's time for us to take a short break when we come back uh, we'll talk about um, what you can do with your money a couple of viewers have written in with their investment plans and where they've been investing we'll go through them and then talk to Sumit about whether their investment plans are making sense or not that's after this break the financial planner presented by the bombay stock exchange ipf 